nephew, niece, Dr. Yusuf Sabri. It's that time of year if you haven't taken care of it already. It's time to complete your financial aid. So for those who haven't or started and haven't finished or have questions, welcome to Financial Aid Friday. For every Friday, I'm gonna give you a little information about the FAFSA forms, what it's about, overviews, how to complete your FAFSA, things to help you fill out your financial aid to get you prepared for the fall semester at your respective colleges and universities. So stay tuned every Friday for Financial Aid Friday. Thank you for tuning in to Education Over Everything. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. The student will need to complete the following sections once they have logged in with their FSA ID. 1. Personal circumstances. 2. Demographics. 3. Financials. 4. Colleges. 5. Signature. Once you log in, you will first need to verify student identity information, state of legal residence, and provide consent and approval. When verifying your student identity information, all fields must be edited on the account settings page, except for your mailing address. On the State of Legal Residence page, select the state and enter the date you became a resident. Next, you will need to provide consent and approval for your federal tax information to be transferred into the FAFSA directly from the IRS. You must provide consent and approval in order to be eligible for federal financial aid. Now you will begin the Personal Circumstances section of the FAFSA. First, you will select your marital status and select your college or career school plans and if you will have attained a bachelor's degree. Next, you will be asked a series of questions to determine your dependency status. You will first be asked to review and select if any of the statements are true. Next, you will be asked if you were homeless or at risk of being homeless. And lastly, you will be asked if you have unusual circumstances of contacting your parents that could put you at risk. You may be asked to provide additional information if you answer yes to any of these questions. If you are considered dependent, you will be given the opportunity to select that you would only like to be considered for a direct unsubsidized loan if parents are unwilling to provide their information. If you are a dependent student, or an independent student with a spouse who filed married filing separately, you will need to invite contributors to provide consent to their information being included on the FAFSA. You may be asked a series of questions to determine who needs to be invited to provide their information. To invite a contributor, you will need to provide their name, date of birth, social security number, if they have one, and email address. An email will be sent for them to complete their portion of the FAFSA. In the Demographics section, you will be asked a series of demographic questions. Questions such as gender, race, and ethnicity questions are for research purposes only and will not affect eligibility. Students who will have completed their high school diploma will need to search and select the high school they have or will have graduated from. In the Financial section, as a student, you may be asked some supplemental questions regarding your federal tax information, if filed. You will be asked three asset questions regarding your current total in your cash, savings and checking, business net worth, and investment net worth. In the Colleges section, you will select all colleges you want to receive your FAFSA information. You can select up to 20 schools. Lastly, you will review the information provided on the FAFSA, sign, and submit the FAFSA form. Once all contributors, if applicable, have signed, the FAFSA will be submitted and processed.